Hi, in this episode we're going to talk about how to design and laser cut these custom Star Wars light switch plates. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And in this episode I want to talk about custom light switch plates. Now all of these examples are Star Wars themed and many of them use Legos because I love Legos. And you could always go to a hardware store and buy a blank plate like this one and glue any Lego design on it that you would like. And you can make a custom plate that way. But you can really take your designs to the next level if you use Adobe Illustrator to design components and laser cut them and fuse it all together as I've done in these examples. You can also use a laser cutter to engrave a design and hand paint the design as I've done in this example. So I'll talk about all of that in this episode. Let's start with the design in Adobe Illustrator. I always have a layer that I call my reference layer where I put things in green that won't affect the laser cutter but help me lay out the design. So this is the size and layout of a standard switch plate. And a jumbo switch plate is 3 quarters of an inch larger in both dimensions. And this is the size of your average Lego person. My switch plate is larger than a jumbo. It's 1 inch larger in both dimensions. And I learned from experimentation that I needed to add a ring on the back to give a little volume to the switch plate and to have a tight fit to the wall. Ideally, I think both of these pieces would be cut in matching 1 8 inch thick acrylic. For my engraving experiment, I used a free piece of clip art I found for Boba Fett's helmet, and I put some text in for Boba Fett, and I'm just leaving this in black, and that means it'll be rastered on the laser cutter as you'll see and I'll set the manual settings on the laser cutter so that that's a deep pocket that's cut. As for the components that I'm cutting in acrylic to add to my plates I have some bursts that I'm going to use for gunfire and I created a little base that I'm going to use to actually mount my Lego people to. I did Cassian and Jin for my Rogue One plate and I did that in script so it would stay together in one piece and be able to act as a platform for my people. And I always have a page where I can just digitally test a design by laying things out. There's my estimate of the size of a Lego person sitting on a base and some bursts. I just think of this as virtual testing. So now I'm at Tech Shop and I cut my first switch plate and the first thing I do is check and make sure that those holes on the slot for the switch actually are the right size and the right place. I decided to add some rastered circles around the holes so that I could countersink the heads of the screws a little bit. And here is the deep pocket cutting that's rastering when it acts just like a printer there. And I'm doing this with the paper on so it's easy to paint afterwards. And you can see the edge here that it's uh, really quite a bit of an indent there for the helmet and the text. My standard approach is to cut everything in multiple different colors of acrylic so that I have options to experiment with afterwards. For example, the names I cut in both ivory and blue. I painted my Boba Fett plate using the Citadel paints that I use for painting my miniatures. And I'm careful, but I'm not super neat because I know, I know I'm going to be peeling the paper off and this is what it looks like when the paper's off. It turns out quite well and I'll just seal that with matte varnish. Now I get to move on to what for me is really the fun part, which is the experimentation. I have my bowl of components. And here's actually my original vision for the Rogue One plate was to have white on white Jin and Cassian names and then the figures mounted on top of those. And I like that, but I also tried it putting blue on the top layer over the ivory, and I tried a blue plate with ivory letters. I want to talk for a second about fusing, which is, I've shown this in past videos where we use this solvent cement, and fusing has a lot of advantages. It's fast and easy. It gives you a better look, especially on transparent and translucent acrylic. It gives you a better bond because it actually fuses or welds two pieces of acrylic into one piece. But sometimes it doesn't work because it only works on certain plastics. So this is what the process looks like. You have the syringe bottle and you squeeze the air out of it and you suck fluid up into the bottle and you just use a very small amount. What I learned through experimentation is I could not fuse to the store-bought switch plate. It's probably made out of nylon. 
but luckily the Legos are acrylic and they fuse nicely to the acrylic switch plate. So the first thing I do is I put the multi-layer components together. These are the bases that are two and in one case three layers deep. And then I start to fuse the characters to the bases. Only takes about a minute for them to set up and then I can put them on the switch plate and see how quickly. It takes me one minute literally to fuse those to the switch plate. And then I tack weld the heads just to, for some extra security. On the other plates, I start by fusing on the bursts. Then I fuse the people to their bases. And then I fuse the bases to the switch plate. You could use the solvent to fuse the Lego characters into a given position, but I left them mostly movable. One thing I would do differently is I would use more opaque acrylics for the switch plate itself because you can see the shadow of the opening in the wall behind it. I think a mirrored acrylic would work really well for this. In the end, I really enjoyed this project. Anytime you get to play with Legos is a good day. It's a quick and easy way to make something custom for your child's room or for a game room. I even think it would make a great gift. I have lots of other projects coming up, especially projects related to gaming. If you're interested, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.